So as you remember, I am a child of the 80s, and I grew up on movies such as The NeverEnding Story. If you remember that one, or maybe your children or grandchildren um, watched that one. But I, I, I love that movie because of how it actually gives us a beautiful image into Scripture. You have this boy who's reading this story that seems to be like a story about something way, way over here. And as he's reading it, he starts realizing that that's him. And he's not merely just reading a story, but he's actually looking at a mirror and actually seeing himself. And realizing that he's actually in the midst of that story. And the more that we allow scripture to soak into our bones the more we start to realize that this is not merely a story about some guys that lived a while ago. But it's actually our story. And we really see ourselves in here. And so I'd like to walk through this, the, the, the story of Jesus walking on the water, Peter walking on the water, and to really kind of look and see, where are we in this? Because you'll notice that there are so many different aspects in here and all of us might be in different places in this journey, but there might be things that really kind of ring in your heart to be like, wow, yeah, that's me right now. So, going through this, it first starts saying, after he fed the people. So, he just did a miracle, just like the same day. And now they're, they're moving away from that moment. But that miracle was not just feeding 5,000 people, but that was only 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. That's like 20,000 people that he fed with five loaves and two fish. Now, imagine if that happened to you guys. Would that be something that you would remember? I mean, you'd think that they would remember this, but as we go through, we realize it's like the same day, and trouble comes in, and they forget about who God is. They forget that he just did this amazing miracle. Maybe sometimes that's us where, I don't know about you, but many times it's like, okay, something powerful happens in, in, in my life and the Lord, but the moment there's some kind of setback or trouble or difficulty or whatever, isn't it so easy for us to just forget about all that the Lord did in the past? And we're kind of stuck right here. So now, after Jesus fed the people, then it says Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side. Now, have you ever been on one of those roller coasters where you have the um, roller coaster attendants, the guys who are working the machines, and they just kind of lock you in, they sort of push the button, and then they kind of go like this, and you're just kind of going off, and maybe if you don't like roller coasters, you're thinking, hey, uh, why are you sending me off on this thing when you're sitting back? It says here, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side. In other words, he didn't just say, um, hey guys, if you want, you can go in here or so. Um, but he just kind of put them in the boat. And then I can just see him just sort of like kicking the boat off. And they're in the boat. And they're kind of like, um, aren't you supposed to like lead us on this journey? And you just maybe kind of see a little smile. He's just like... Have a good time, guys. But maybe that's not always funny for us. Because maybe that is maybe some of those experiences where it feels like God just sort of pushed us off. And now he's a little further than he was before. And maybe that doubt starts to creep in. Lord, are you guiding this boat right now? Or did you just kind of put us in the boat and you're back here while we're over here? And that little doubt starts to grow. Because while Jesus is over here, the boat is starting to get trouble. It says the wind is against it. They're within sight of the shore. They're only just a couple miles offshore. But it says that they're being tossed about by the waves where the wind was against them. Maybe you have this experience where you're moving in this direction and sort of right before you can sort of see where you're trying to get to and yet there's something pushing you back and it's creating this turbulence and you just can't seem to go anywhere maybe sometimes even in like your spiritual life it's sort of like lord i'm trying to i'm trying to to, to walk with you but 
I feel like I'm walking back and there's something pushing me back. That, that frustration of being in a boat. I remember this in like scout camps sometimes where we'd be like in a canoe or something and we'd just be going like against stream. And you just, the harder you row, it just seems like you're just moving backwards instead. And just that frustration, maybe even that, that panic of saying, I can't ever get to where I'm supposed to go. I'm stuck. And it doesn't seem like the Lord is in the boat with me because he's back there. You see how the doubt starts to grow more and more. And this continues into the fourth watch of the night. So that's the moment in which it's still dark. It's the last hour of darkness. But it's right before the light starts to push back. And many times in those moments in which we find ourselves in that moment of darkness, we have to remember that the light is right around the corner. And, and ultimately, this gospel really speaks about the fact that Jesus is always with Peter. Regardless of whether it seems like he pushed him off in the boat, whether the waves are going against him, he's always with Peter. He never left him, even though sometimes it seems like that. It's kind of like that footprints poem, if you remember that sense of, Lord, where were you? I only saw one set of footprints. Actually, I was carrying you during that time, even though you couldn't see me. So we go on, and it says, During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea. Now, other than just being cool, like, he's like walking on the sea. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty neat. There, there's something a little deeper here. The ocean, the sea, in biblical times, in many other cultures of the ancient world, was the place where the forces of chaos were. If you even read something like Beowulf, that great epic, you see that that's where the monsters are. If you remember the story, Beowulf gets sucked down in there and he's battling monsters all this time. It happens in the deep. Think about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Jules Verne. You have those mysterious monsters out there. You have this, this, this image in our culture that we're afraid of the deep parts of the sea. And even in the book of Revelation, guess who comes out of the sea? The beast comes out of the sea. So the sea is not a nice place to be. It represents the places of destruction, the places of danger, the places of chaos, the places where there is no order. And yet what does God do? Jesus Christ walks over the sea. That word walk in Greek is actually the same word to live. He lives over the sea. He's not bound by the sea. He's not enslaved by any of those fears there. He's able to walk over it and to say, I am free. And if you have life in me, if the sun has set you free, you will be free indeed. That's what it means for Jesus to walk over the sea, is that He's not bound by any of those fears, any of those forces of chaos. They have no power over him. And that's what he wants Peter to do. He wants each of us to do. But before that happens, the apostles cry out. It's a ghost. They cry out in fear. And maybe that fear was the fear of being let down. Maybe this is your experience sometimes is when you just keep getting hit down and down and that doubt which the disciples had and it grows and grows and maybe you're afraid that as you hear this little call of, of hope saying you know you see the Lord coming maybe there's a sense of saying but if I reach out to him and he slips through my fingers then I'm gonna be off I'm gonna be worse off so sometimes it's better just to defend my heart, harden my heart, and just kind of stay away, because then I will never ever get let down. If I don't reach out, then I won't get let down. Because maybe Jesus is not flesh and blood, maybe Jesus is just a ghost here. But notice how the Lord responds to them. He says, take courage, it is I. Not just a ghost, but it's me. Do not be afraid. 
And you know those word, that word, do not be afraid, it, it's quite beautiful. But guess how many times that pops up in the Bible? 365 times. How many days are in a year? 365. Now, in the Bible, they use a different calendar, but the Lord kind of gives us this little, little nugget because he knows all time. He knows that we're going to be using a 365-day calendar. So quite possibly, maybe what he's saying to us right now is, I'm with you every day of the year. There's not a time where I'm not with you. Don't be afraid. And Peter musters up the courage to say, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. We forget about this, this fact a lot of times. We think about Peter as denying Christ, as falling, as sinking, but he actually had the courage to get out of the boat. The Lord says, come. So Peter gets out of the boat. He begins to walk on the water toward Jesus. As long as he has his eyes fixed on Jesus, that fear, that chaos, those forces that we find within our own world that can just tear our heart apart, he's not bound by them anymore. He's able to walk free towards Jesus until he gets distracted. That's the thing that happens first. All of a sudden he starts reminding himself of the waves on either side. And they start to speak to him maybe a little louder. Because remember, Jesus' voice is powerful, is mighty, but it's not found in the earthquake. It's not found in the storm. It's found in the still, small whisper. And sometimes those other voices can be so loud, even though they're not as powerful, they can try to drown that out. And so the moment that he starts looking this way and this way, what happens is he starts to... He starts to rely on his own strength before he's walking towards the Lord and he's able to walk on water. But the moment he starts going like this, that doubt starts coming in to say, well, maybe he is a ghost. Maybe he's not going to take care of me. So I got to take care of things myself. I got to face these waves. And the moment he does that, he gets off balance and he starts to sink. He does something that's so important, and something that we always have to remember whenever we feel like we're sinking. Because there are those moments where we rely on our own strength, and we go back and forth so many times, but never forget to just cry out, Lord, save me. And notice what it says here. It says immediately. So it doesn't say 10 seconds later. It says immediately. Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. So remember how Jesus seemed like he was like way over there? Remember how Jesus seemed like he was still, you know, up on the mountain to pray when he pushed off the disciples? The moment Peter says, save me, Jesus is right there. He catches his hand. He lifts him up out of those waters. And he says to him, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? He doesn't say it in a vengeful way. He doesn't say, what's wrong with you, Peter? But there's probably this, like, smile of tenderness there as he's holding him, saying, Peter, I'm always with you. I've never left you. So why are you doing a silly thing like relying on your own strength? And Jesus gets into the boat and then dies storms are gone because he has overcome them jesus wants to come into your boat and he wants to teach you that he's always with you he never leaves even pope francis has this very beautiful insight in the homily that he gave today in which he says meditate on that image of jesus reaching down grabbing peter's hand and lifting him up because that's what jesus does that's who Jesus is. Jesus is the hand of the Father, saying, I will never, ever leave you. I am always here to catch you when you fall. And there are no storms that are too big for me, because he's Lord of the wind. And even in the scriptures, in the Old Testament, it talks about, and this is why they say, truly, you are the Son of God. It's because God, Yahweh, is the one who walks over the storms. He walks on the waves of the sea. He 
he stills those waves to a, to a, to a whisper. And that's a sign that he's God. So let the Lord be Lord of your life. Look into this passage and say, where am I in this moment? And wherever you are, this is a guide to show us what we need to do. To reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. Knowing he's always there. He never forgets his children.